Good morning, folks. Hi, Phil McPhail here with the United Country Lifestyle Properties of Maine, and welcome to Asgard. Or actually, we're at 20 Asgard Road in the town of Lakeville, Maine. And this place is as close to Valhalla as you're going to get in Penobscot County. Check out this view. What we're going to see today, folks, is a homestead that my clients have literally carved out of the main woods. They've created a beautiful field. They got some groomed trails, little park-like places all over the property, plantings from fruit trees to berries. This is an amazing property. A couple of cabins, a bunch of outbuildings. Stick around towards the end of the video. We're going to see a couple of nice brooks on this property, one major brook and one small little private stream that's not even on the map. Hey, before we look at all the buildings and the improvements to this property, let's talk about this location. The town of Lakeville is in far eastern Penobscot County. The population here is just over 100 according to the last census. This town gets its name from all of the lakes in this area. We've got Bottle Lake, Lombard Lake, the Pug Ponds, two of them, Upper Cisladopsis, Lower Cisladopsis, Junior Lake, Mill Privilege, and there's a couple more, but I'm losing, I'm losing count, folks. You get the idea. This is a wilderness area with lots of water, lots of lakes, boat landings just a couple miles down the road from this property. This land is located about 26 miles to Lincoln, which would be your nearest service town. There you're going to find a hospital, grocery stores, um, all kinds of professional offices, car dealers, everything you need for everyday life. It's about a half hour ride from the property. The city of Bangor is about 72 miles away. Bangor's got an international airport, big box stores, lots of things to do, world-class restaurants. Portland's about 200 miles away. And you know, if you know Maine, everybody knows Portland, one of the finest small cities in the country. And Boston is just over 300 miles and about five hours and 10, 15 minutes from here. Before we go take a look at the buildings, folks, don't forget, like this video and share it with some of your friends. You gotta have a friend out there that's looking for a homestead here in the state of Maine. Share this with them so they can get a shot at it before somebody else does. Also, if you don't mind, hit that subscription button. If you've been watching our videos for a while and you don't wanna miss them, uh, that's the only way you can be sure is hit that subscription button and put on all notifications. So let's go take the rest of the tour. We're in here about 700 feet from Bottle Lake Road on Asgard Road. And Asgard Road is basically a private road, private driveway to this property. We've come to the first cabin. This cabin is 16 by 24. As you can see, it's all finished with wood siding. It sets on concrete pads on a gravel pad on the ground. Let's go on inside and check it out. So folks, as you come into the cabin, this is a one room cabin. We've got some privacy screens here, but this is the kitchen area. As you come in, you've got a beautiful wood countertop. We've got appliances, they're all black that will stay here. There's a gas range, an electric refrigerator, and you have the washer and dryer. Over here, we've got some pretty nice cabinetry, plenty of storage for all your, your dishes and food. And we do have a little pantry area as well over in here. As we come this way, kind of the living space. This room, this, this Trolla wood stove is from 1912. And the thing is, it looks brand new. It's amazing. And that heats this cabin very well. You got your bed over here and a sink and a commode, and we have a shower over here behind the curtain. One more thing I wanted to point out to you folks before we head out of here. This is a very small space, but very well organized, nice little tiny home here. Um, the floors are hardwood flooring, and it's, it's the real deal hardwood. This isn't your laminate stuff, so it's beautiful flooring in here with a dark stain on it. Um, very homey little cabin. Let's go check out the rest of the outbuildings. So let's go check out some other features right here of the cabin before we move on to the other buildings. This um, right here on a concrete pad is a nice four or more person hot tub. Very well done. They run it and they use it year round. Behind the tub, you'll see the dug well. There's two wells on the property. Beautiful dug well on this. They get all the water they need for the cabin out of there. Up on the hill, which we're gonna look at later, there's a drilled well. So from here, on the other side of the cabin, we've got a little slate walkway here with some red brick down, P-stone, 
We got a picnic table here, and then this pavilion, which is made out of wood cut right here on the property. Beautiful place. And just wanted to point out a couple of the nice sheds that the owners found here. If you like deer hunting, there's some nice white tailed deer here. And the quality of the of the grasses that they're growing will bring in white tailed deer. You won't have to travel far if you want to hunt them. I mean, you can go out into the woods after them, but they'll be out here in the field mornings and evenings. As we leave the uh, pavilion here, we got the cabin behind us. I'm going to head over and show you what I'm calling the multi-purpose building. This building could easily be another cabin. Uh, they've used it for a variety of things from an exercise room to pottery and all kinds of crafts. It's an insulated and heated building. Let's go check that out. This is the multi-purpose building and it's 12 by 24. It does have a nice uh, overhanging roof here for wood storage. Uh, there's currently about four cord in there. You got at least another two or three you could put in there if you wanted to. The cabin is small and heats very easy for less than two quarter wood a year. You're gonna heat that cabin. So you could keep several years worth of firewood out here. Let's go inside this building, check this out. Okay, as we come into the 12 by 24 multi-purpose building, you'll notice that the ceiling's insulated in here. The walls are all insulated. We've got thermal windows. We've got space for all kinds of stuff in here. Uh, you can do crafts, uh, hobbies, exercise room. We've got freezer storage. There's two freezers out here. Nice little building. You make it what you want out of it. After we come out of the multi-purpose building, this uh, tent Quonset hut will stay for, you know, it's, it's nothing real special, but it'll keep your uh, mowers and stuff out of the direct sun and weather. And behind me, behind that, that uh, Quonset hut, we have a small duck pond. The owners have dug this out and it's spring fed. And so you get yourself a duck pond. We're gonna go into this next building over here, which is about 10 by eight. It's a she shed, but my, my owners are calling it the cute factory right now. At one time, there was rabbit cages here. They raised some rabbits, but let's go check out the inside of this place. We're over here by the she shed now. We're gonna go take a look. Cute factory, keep that in mind. Right now, we've got a bunch of kitties in here and they're all gonna try to get away from us. So this has been a chicken coop, um, she shed, all kinds of different things. But right now it's a kitten factory. So check this out while you're here. Come on guys, let's get back inside your house. It's nice and warm in there. After we leave the, uh, the cute factory, we're gonna head over here to this 10 by 16 workshop. And this is a pretty nice space. Um, you know, it, it could be heated if you wanted to heat this and use it in the wintertime, it wouldn't take much, but it's got a nice workbench in here. If you live this far out in the rural areas, you're gonna want to have a space where you can work on things. This storage in here as well for your equipment, but this is a very nice structure and everybody should have one. On the end of this building is the composting outhouse, which is, uh, is a directly attached to the end of the building. You'll see that here in the B-roll. We're out here near Bottle Lake Road where Asgard Road comes to it. And this is an eight by eight farm stand building. My clients do raise a fair amount of organic vegetables and raise uh, chickens and eggs. They sell them out of here, kind of an honor system. People drop their money here in the, in the box as they pick up what, whatever it is they're, they're, that's available at the time. As you're coming here in on Bottle Lake Road to this property, you're gonna come in to this driveway entrance and you, my client has uh, had a little bit of practice on splitting granite and he's got the granite uh, wall on this side, stone wall over here. We got a nice little crab apple tree at the entrance of this property. This just kind of tells you how nice it's gonna be when you get in here. Beautiful entrance out here on the road. On Bottle Lake Road, we've got about 650 feet of frontage, which they don't really utilize because they built this long driveway in along the hillside to get all kinds of uh, privacy off this road. Not that this road's that busy, cause it's not, but it just makes it beautiful. You come in here, you can't see this house. You have no idea what's in store for you as you go in on Asgard Road. And then directly across the road, we're gonna show you this trail. So you can come out of Asgard Road, cross Bottle Lake Road, and we have a trail entrance here for both ATV and snowmobile trail. So if you really like the outdoors and enjoy riding, 
maybe cross country skiing. We have a groom trail that picks up right over there. There's uh, about 50 feet until you hit the main trail. And then you can ride from here to all points in Maine. Hey, uh, before we head out to the field and the other buildings that are out there, I wanted to show you this kind of quiet little spot just south of the cabin. We're within about 100 feet of the cabin. The owner has done a beautiful rock, uh, I, I don't know what we're gonna call it, Stonehenge, but that's not really uh, Norse, but it's just a beautiful setting in here with some big boulders, stacked rocks. Some of these rocks are upwards of 800 to 1,000 pounds, so it's a pretty cool little, little feature here on the property. Come sit over here in the shade during the day, read a book, what a great spot to hang out. Well, we've looked at all the buildings down here in the living space by, by the main cabin. We're gonna head up into the field that's been created up here and show you this four plus acre field. We've got another uh, guest cabin up here that's built. We've got a barn and we've got a portable chicken coop we're gonna show you when we get up here. As we're heading out here in the field, we're gonna come by some hardwood uh, um, pieces here that have been inoculated with shiitake mushrooms. So those are here and those are growing well. You can check those out. Let's keep on going up into the field. We're up here in the field now, folks, and what we got behind me here is a 16 by 16 guest cabin that they've started construction on. The exterior is finished, doors, windows are in. It's been insulated. It's got to be finished inside. And we're going to go look at that next, and then we're going to look at a lot of the plantings here along this northeast corner of the field. Okay, we're coming into the cabin now, and there's uh, basically two rooms partitioned off here. We do have uh, uh, a spot where the wood stove chimney would go through left in the roof here. This is your entry, it could be a kitchen area here, and then a bedroom over in this, this side of the uh, cabin. And as you can see, this is all R13 fiberglass insulation, and we do have thermopane windows all the way around. And folks outside of the 16 by 16 guest cabin, we do have another outhouse, another composting bucket outhouse. And now we're gonna walk down around the other side of the cabin, check out the northeast corner and some of the plantings that we have running along this northern side that get sun all day long. The whole northern and, and eastern side of this field is planted with all kinds of plantings. Um, we've got all kinds of things. These are a, a Viking chokeberry, which I'm not familiar with, but uh, my clients tell me they make a pretty good jam. You can, you'll see all kinds of plantings here from chestnuts to plum trees to apple trees, high bush blueberries we have running along this side over here, um, lilacs, we've got elderberry, we've got uh, high bush cranberry, we even have a redwood tree planted down here that's pretty cool. Right next to the guest cabin and in behind the plantings we just looked at, we've got a beautiful stone garden in here with some tree carvings you gotta check out. So come, come on in, let's look at it together. We're in here now in this little woodsy rock garden, folks, and this is such a cool spot. And my client is multi-talented, as you can probably tell from looking at this property, but uh, what a cool carving in this old hemlock, old man of the woods here. Um, kind of watching over everybody, uh, watching over everyone that's hanging out here in the rock garden. So over here, folks, this is a very interesting part of the property. I want to share a little bit with you. Uh, the chickens here are Beinfelders and Americana breed. They're a heritage breed chicken. And if you're interested in them, they can stay with the property. We also have a portable chicken coop, which is... Uh, well, he's trying to tell us what it is, but Joe Salatin, um, the farmer that you may have seen on YouTube that I think they call him, um, I can't remember what they call him. We'll put, we'll put a link to Joel in the, in the description below the video, but this is a portable, portable coop that can be moved around in different spots on the uh, field here. The chickens will, will, uh, they'll peck through the manure from the from the sheep or whatever other animals you have hanging around and they'll fertilize this section and in a day or so they'll move it somewhere else and you'll see the lushness of the clover the timothy that's planted here and other grasses are just spectacular i haven't seen a more lush grass anywhere i've been so this system works this does stay with the property if you want it the fence can stay the chicken coop for sure and uh, let's go look at the barn and take a look at the back of the field Right up here in the center of the field, folks, you're gonna see 
the drill well casing. It's to, to pretty, pretty this casing up, we've got a, a stone uh, enclosure around it. Very nice. Right now it's running off a generator. The My client's original intent was to build up here in this field, <laughs> overlooking that mountain view behind us, up Dill Ridge, um, and have the cabins for rental property in the back. It's something that you might want to consider. I think this property could produce a fair amount of income if you want to run it that way as an Airbnb for sports for people looking to recreate up here between fishing, sledders, ATVers, hunters, uh, all kinds of people come to Lakeville. So let's go check out the barn. And the last building we're gonna look at here before we take a walk in the woods and go look at those brooks I promised you is this barn. It's just about 20 by 40. We do have some fencing around. Currently it houses uh, three sheep and a, and a handful of pigs. The sheep could stay. We'll talk about those in a minute. The pigs are not gonna stay. They've already been spoken for. But uh, this is another nice feature here. It's a it's, uh, solid structure. You know, it's, a, it's an animal barn. It's nothing you're gonna wanna, it's not big enough for your horses, obviously. And certainly you're not gonna wanna put a lot of storage in there, but to house your animals, perfect little building out here in the back of the field. Let's go take a look at the land now. I was kind of hoping to show you the sheep, but I guess I'm not going to go stir them out of the barn. There's three of them here. The male is a Katahdin breed. That's a breed that was made specially for Maine, as in the name you might imagine, the Mount Katahdin, named after Maine's largest mountain. And the um, the uh, ewes are, the two ewes are both, uh, are, they're a mix of Katahdin and Dorper breeds, and they're ma mainly raised for food. Uh, they, they shed their coat, so you don't have to shear them. It's kind of a nice uh, sheep breed for this part of the world. But if you're interested in those, they can stay with the property. You'll see the pigs in here, and they've got a really kind of a cool fence system where they've used natural materials to build a fence, and they just keep adding to this we do have a wired fence in behind it, but this, uh, this kind of fences this off and you'll see that running through the woods. And over here, we have another old man of the woods carving in this big hemlock tree, watching the south uh, view of the field. We talked about how good this field was, folks. This is a mixture in this area of Thorndike, Winnicook, Howland, and Dixmont stony loams. Uh, that's about 70% of the uh, of the property according to NRCS. So these are really good soils for growing trees. They can be very good for agriculture as you can see. However, they are very rocky. So to create a field like this is a pretty big expense, but it's already been done. You got four acres plus here, a beautiful field. The timber is growing extremely well. The elevations on the property run from about 360 to 460 feet above sea level. Nice high ground with the exception of obviously the streams that we're gonna look at next. But um, the overall land is mostly timber, some beautiful wood in here, it hasn't been timber harvested in many, many years. So those of you who don't like to see that, you're not gonna see any timber harvesting on this property. We're gonna go into the woods now, walk down and check out the two brooks. As you leave the field here, we have some nice trails. There's a beautiful trail that goes down to the first brook and the owners have a number of trails around the property. So as you've seen already, the rock gardens, the little secret spots in the wood, the trails kind of interconnect around. And as we move into this nice forest, we have a nice mixed growth forest here. Up on the hill, it's primarily hardwoods. We've got maples, oaks, um, some ash, beech, heck of a beech nut year this year, folks. When you get here, you're gonna see beech nuts all over the ground. It's pretty amazing, the deer love them. And we're gonna continue down this trail and go check out a really nice spot on the brook. We're down here at the first brook and it's not like you can't get some relaxation up there by the, uh, the field and the, and the cabin, but I, this sound of this running little brook in here is just amazing. We're with a canopy of old growth hemlock trees uh, shading this year round. There's a nice deep pool here. This little brook actually has brook trout in it. It's uh, rearing waters for brook trout that are in the lakes down below us, downstream of this. This brook has no name. It's not shown on any maps that I've found, which is amazing because it does run year round. Really cold water, it stays cold all summer long. Uh, cute little spot down here. What a place to build like a little tent platform. Maybe have some friends up and they can hang out down here by this brook. It's about a quarter mile hike down in here from the field, but it's well worth checking out while you're here. You'll notice folks that this is a fairly young forest with the exception of the hemlock, which was 
not touched during the last timber harvest that I'm guessing was probably 30 years ago, maybe longer, maybe 40. But we've got some nice hardwood transitioning towards Dill Brook where we just left the small brook. And we're walking through the woods here. And as you can see, it's, there's not a lot of underbrush in here. It's pretty easy to walk through. For those who like to hunt, you, you've got a lot of areas where you can see some distance. So if you had a stand location down here, you'd, you'd have a good opportunity for some success. We've made our way back to Dill Brook and this, this brook is a, is a very shaded brook. It's choked out with alders, be a very difficult place to fish. However, it is a good fish rearing habitat up here in the middle of the woods. This brook runs through the property for about 650 feet and eventually runs into Bottle Lake. And the other brook that we looked at runs across the property as well for about the same distance before it enters this brook and then they both flow into a bottle. Um, one other thing I wanted to point out to you, there's more land on the other side of this brook. You can access it, but there's a little bit of a caveat there. The property fronts on a public paved road, so there's no association fees, no road maintenance fees, it's all part of the town. If you wanted to access the back of this land by road, other than by foot or crossing the brook here, you could come in on the private road system, but you would have to join the Cicela Dobbs's um, Lot Owners Association that takes care of the roads over there. And then you could have uh, a license to use those roads. At least that's the last time I asked somebody in the association, they told me that. And I believe it's still true. They, they'd love to have another member. You could have another cabin off that site. That site on the other side of the brook would be completely off grid. This is the northern boundary line over here and it's been pretty well maintained, all blaze red. We still have the, uh, your spots on the trees to follow. So, and there's some flagging here. And not only that, but you do have a, a more recent timber harvest on the next property over. So fi figuring out where your boundary line here is quite easy. Let's go back up and we'll, uh, we'll wrap up this video for you folks. Thank you all for coming along on this tour. And you can probably tell I'm in love with this piece of property. Um, let's go over the terms. Asking price on 20 Asgard Road in Lakeville is $269,900. And you're not gonna believe this. We are in one of the lowest tax towns in New England with a less than $4 per thousand mill rate. The taxes on this 45.3 acres, fields, buildings, everything here is $193 in the last tax year. That's the year. So. Think about that folks, when you're looking at properties to buy, how much is that worth to you to have a $200 tax bill instead of a $4,000 tax bill? A lot of towns, this property would be $3,000 to $6,000 a year in taxes. So that's a big savings. Come check this property out. We got these two brooks, beautiful property, 45.3 acres of, of land, four or five acres of cleared area with a field and barns and sheds and potential cabins beyond the, the, uh, the single family home that they're, they're living in here now. Uh, I, I, there's just too much to talk about. So give me a call, 800-286-6164. Schedule a tour, get up here soon. I'm sure this property won't stay on the market very long.